A piston engine as we know it started as a single cylinder. Soon it became apparent that more cylinders would be essential to create a more useful and more user-friendly power plant. More and more cylinders were added in a line, creating a handful of straight engines, most notably 4, 6 and 8 cylinders. But there comes a problem with it. Packaging. The issue with inline engines is that they can be incredibly long, see the straight 8 video released recently, especially inline 6s and inline 8s, requiring a long hood or a very wide body if mounted transversely. Volvo was a typical example of a transversely mounted straight 6, and owners could speak for themselves how bad the turning radius of these cars is. This is where a V-shaped design comes in handy. A large and power-packed unit that only needs so much space as an inline 3 or 4, but at an expense of a wider block. 8 cylinders were organized into a V8, and V6 followed sometime later. For some engine makers, 90 or even a 60 degree V engine was not compact enough with its added wider footprint, and so a VR concept was developed. The acronym stands for V Reihe in German, V inline, and combines best of both worlds. Instead of a conventional two bank block, this one is a single inline-like unit that has staggered cylinders at a certain angle, typically from 10 to 20 degrees. It must only have a single head, and from the outside it resembles a straight motor. I know that many of you now think of Volkswagen, but hold up for a second. The very first VR design could have been observed in Lancia stables from as early as 1922. The Lancia Lambda, as they called it, featured a 2.1, 2.4 and a 2.6 liter narrow angle V4 engine of 20 degrees, using a single cam for both cylinder banks. This Lancia V4 series lasted over half a century from as low as 0.9 liter, peaking with an 11 degree Fulvia 1.6 liter in the 1970s with a power of 132 horsepower. All these were longitudinally mounted power units. The idea was adopted by Volkswagen, which started its development as a 2-liter in 1978, just two years after the end of the Lancia V4. To fit a six-cylinder under the hood of a car like a Volkswagen was incredibly tricky, but this almost unheard concept made it easily possible. The power plant was released as a 15-degree 2.8 liter, and its main benefit was marginally bigger size than an i4 with a much more power potential. The VR6 brings some specialties into the game that makes it a bit different to engineer. The 15 degree engine received 22 degree split crank pins on the crankshaft to even out the firing order. Furthermore, intake and exhaust channels in the head are of a different length between the cylinders caused by the staggered design. It required an evening out in the intake and exhaust header length, otherwise the engine would have multiple cylinders of different horsepower output at a different RPM range. Other interesting features are the pistons and cylinders, which are at an angle to the head. Therefore, the piston tops are skewed and are inserted at an angle. The first birds were the Passat B3 and Corrado with 174 horsepower, later also in the Transporter, Golf and Sharon. Interestingly, it was a 2.8 liter double overhead cam engine with 12 valves and required a premium octane gasoline. For some models, a 2.9 liter was used for a short period of time with an increased bore from 91 to 92 millimeters, known in the Golf MK3, Passat B4 and Corrado. Several years later, and 24 valve variant of the 2.8 was launched, 
with about 200 horsepower that now could run a regular octane gasoline found in the Alhambra, Golf MK4, Bora, Lyon and Charon. The story of the VR6 gets even more fascinating as in 2003 an EA 390 series was introduced. It was still an indirect injected unit, however gained an electronic throttle body, high compression ratio and an airflow sensor with a power range of 241 to 250 horsepower. This one became popular for use in the Golf R32, Audi A3 and even in the Porsche Cayenne. This variant of the VR6 was even modified to run on an LPG, being used as an industrial 74 horsepower engine in Linde forklifts, in particular the H40T. That was a 15 degree VR6 with the different sonder dimension ratio, and it was succeeded by a direct injected 10.6 degree sibling in the Passat B6 and Phaeton. Later, the 3.6 litre FSI came along with 280 to 300 horsepower. A 260 horsepower 3.6 powered the Volkswagen EOS and Skoda Superb, where a lower compression ratio made it able to consume a regular octane fuel. Surprisingly, the engine is still in production and is an optional feature in the Atlas slash Terramont model. What is even more interesting is the fact that the Terramont and Talagon are both also using a 2.5 liter turbocharged VR6, the only stock turbo VR6 from Volkswagen. An honorable mention is a VR5 layout essentially a 2.8 liter with a chopped off cylinder, having 2.3 liter of displacement and 10 or 20 valves in total. It was a short living project from 1997 to 2006 in the Golf, Bora, Beetle and Seat Toledo. The V5 also appeared in the Passat in a longitudinal layout. The difference in the head port length was in the VR5 compensated with differently sized valves in the head. For motorcyclists I have good news. There is a VR6 powered bike with a completely different engine from the Volkswagen one called the Horex VR6. It displaced 1.2 liters of cylinder volume. It had three valves per cylinder and three cams together with a power of 161 horsepower. It wasn't particularly slow and also sounded extraordinarily well. <laughs> <laughs> 